So Akuma has finally been revealed after almost a year. It's time. We got a little teaser. It was super exciting. I watched it a billion times. And let's talk about it some more. So welcome, Mir. How's it going? Uh, I mean, it's going great. Akuma has definitely raised the R spirits. Yes, definitely. And they, they, they released like a teaser way, way sooner than I expected. But we're almost there. We're almost at the anniversary. So we're going to talk about um, the new stage a little bit, the cutscene itself. And then we'll talk about Akuma, basically, is like what his gameplay is going to be like. And then maybe some release date predictions. So a lot to talk about here, like we usually do whenever uh, a new DLC character is revealed. So let's start with the stage first. At least it's not a random place in the corner of Metro City, you know, like as a fruit like vendor, cool, like somewhere yeah, on the side. It's, like a, it's a cool, <laughs> unique place where Akuma goes to train and stuff and like vandalize and ancient uh, <laughs> statues. Yeah, of whenever he thinks of Ryu. Ryu. About how he stole yeah. his sandals. Like, I, th that's another thing, too. Like, I, re I wish, like, Ed wasn't at the bottom of, like, the subway at night. I wish he was, like, in that uh, Shadowloo lab or something. Mm -hmm. But I guess that wouldn't make sense, like, lore-wise. But yeah, a, yeah. a lot of people are going to obviously bring up that this stage is obviously influenced by the, the Street Fighter Alpha 2 uh, Akuma stage. Uh, you can clearly see it has, like, the candles. It's lit up. But, the, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to it. Like, you can tell it's, like, a very ancient area because there's, like, gigantic statues that Akuma is destroying and somehow repairing them. Uh, you can see, like, a, a, like, a lake. You can see, like, a boat. There's so many candles. It's, it it's looks, lit up. It looks amazing. It looks like a Monster Hunter area almost with the He looks like a Monster Hunter character. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Dude. Uh, it's interesting because they're really leaning more and more into this concept that Akuma is a real demon, right? Like with Street Fighter V, they went more with the look of, um, how, uh, traditional Oni and, uh, Japanese demons look like, right? Like, and, uh, I thought they wanted um, to make it look like Lion King I and mean, I didn't see the demon part or a sunflower. And so, and yeah, and a demon sunflower. Okay. But the point is, um... That that was, uh, I think, a conscientious decision on their part to go that way. And that now they're doing it even more, right? And we're going to talk about it uh, as we go through the, you know, what happens, like the, the, the whole aura thing. Let's go at that. Yeah, I mean, like, but what do you think, like, like aesthetically? Dude, there's lava in there, so it's nice and warm. I, I, do you think that, like, as a stage, it'll be too dark, maybe? Like, I, I, I mean, mean, I would assume that it would be something similar to, say, for example, Dulcimer Temple which is a dulcim stage in Street Fighter 6, where yeah. the front of the stage is well lit, but the back of the stage is still dark and like uh, candle lit. At the end yeah. of the day, it's very comparable, right? It's just that the set of colors would be completely different because this one is, uh, there's a lot of dark reds and you know purples and blacks and blues because it's uh, in the shade, right? And yeah. um, of course, the red of the lava. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, they, they could experiment with different lighting, but we've seen that with the, um, the Shadowloo lab. Um, the lighting looks amazing for uh, a dark stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they clearly are still trying That's true. to maintain the competitive aspect of... Uh, it looks you know, great. Whenever impact. I'm on that stage, it looks great. The Shadowloo stage, the lighting looks awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I guess you're right when you bring that up. But don't forget, man, the Volcano stage in Street Fighter 4, they nerfed that stage because of the lava. Hopefully, hopefully they have the right I mean, angle. That stage for it, was you know? uh, <laughs> it was bad. Uh, you played an entire match on that stage, especially if it was a slow match with throwing fireballs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then you looked at a wall and you just saw like a red square <laughs> because it was just burnt into your retina. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing about the Street Fighter Six stages, I guess, this is kind of a separate topic, but. The, the stages are, are really big, bigger than a lot of people know because, it, because we're on a fixed camera angle because it's a 2D fighting game. Right. But I really like how in Tekken, uh, every at the start of every round, they, they kind of show a weird camera angle. Or there's like a top view or they zoom out a bit and you can kind of see the scope of the stage. But, you know, obviously it's a 3D fighting game. But I feel like because of the fixed camera, I wish they would show more of the stage, like maybe a rotating camera or something between rounds because... In, in like some stage, like the like the Ryu stage, for example, you get this mm -hmm. giant cherry blossom tree, and it like takes up so much of the screen. But if you look carefully at the details, you can see the temple in the background. You can see the waterfall. It's a beautiful stage when it's zoomed out. It's just that when it's only in a one fixed angle for all three rounds. I wish Capcom would mix up a bit, maybe for Street Fighter Seven. But well, I'm just I looking like at it's... the. There's a lot of detail even in that cutscene when you look at that that cave, right? 
I just hope mm -hmm. that they, you know, they have the right angle. It's a weird thing to talk about, but just something that made me think of that. No, I mean, I understand. I think a lot of it is also, uh, it has to do with the cinematic angles with some special moves and certain supers and stuff where yeah. you want to basically have detail for those cinematic angles as well because imagine, otherwise it looks like a, a movie set where the moment you were, <laughs> you're turning the camera a little bit too much then there's nothing in the background, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's definitely something you want to avoid. So maybe that's why they put a lot of detail in. Another thing that it's possible is that when they were making the stage, they made the ba background first, right? And that's fairly big. And then they decided which part of the whole stage, you know, everything was going to take place on, right? And they kind of exactly. like shifted them around until they found the perfect spot and then added extra detail. Mm -hmm. Super hype. I, uh, I, was, I was hoping that either they'd use the Alpha 2 cave area or they'd use something similar in Street Fighter 3 where uh, it was like outside the cave in that kind of like graveyard with the moon. With the moonlight another dark stage by the way but that would be amazing too to see in the re engine but nonetheless i think Capcom did an amazing job i really like the, the like i said the little lake and the lava and the the boat i think is cool all right let's um mirror let's talk about the cutscene itself i know yes. this you know it's short we've watched it a billion times but like just looking at, at akuma seeing him now in motion non-gameplay but just seeing how huge he is he looks mm -hmm. massive he looks powerful um, it doesn't look like he's like moving that fast, but when he like, it's all like super exaggerated. That's like slow motion of him doing that. I, I think that's intentional that they're showing him. It's not slow motion, uh, like at least for uh, when he's punching the statue at the very beginning. I think it is intentional that they're showing him kind of like doing this practice uh, regimen thing where like he's uh, attacking the statue very, very slowly, and yet all of his attacks carry a huge punch you know because yeah, a lot he's so of weight strong and he has strained yeah he has mm -hmm. strained so much and uh they're really like trying to drive home the fact that he's uh you know the super powerful transcended humanity sort of guy right like it's just even the commentary is like explaining that like there's so much history behind him becoming more and more powerful and mm -hmm. and he's aged quite a bit too obviously like you can see he's got uh even in the leaked uh drawings it, it, he had red with the gray streaks like in street fighter 3 his hair was red yeah. but now you can see what their their final uh take on what he looks like it's all just gray hair now just straight up he looks really old and all of everything he's wearing looks just like i don't know i don't, I don't even know what the word would be but it's not it's just for practical use you know it's not for any type yeah. of show it's literally absolutely just I mean, More he's not, he's not even wearing a shirt anymore, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I don't even know. He's, he's a hermit, right? It's like almost, he's living in a cave. He's yeah. got his, like, bear skin pelt or whatever that he probably ripped from the bear, like, when he it's, was still alive. It's a cool <laughs> vibe. It's more of the, the kind of the martial arts, uh, I don't know, monk kind of vibe. I, I, yeah. it's, it's really yeah, sick. Cool. It, it's They did a, a great job uh, with how I he looks. It, I think something interesting is how... He has this um, not mantle, but it's it's like a little cowl, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very similar color to the rest of his hair. So the hair sort of blends into this, um, you know, like shoulder. I don't know the call. I guess cowl is the right word. The shoulder cowl, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, that is also the same color as what he's wearing around his waist, right? Whatever this this furry thing is, and I think. It's it's very very intentional, right? Like that the the hair blends into the fur, and he just has, is not particularly colorful as a, like a base design, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a lot of grays and whites, and uh, the only like trace of color that you see is is a uh, traditional like dark purple pants. That's true, and you know it's funny. And, the, the chat is mentioning like I, I wonder like what his outfit three looks like, but even his nostalgic I, outfit mirror. Don't you think it will look weird because he's so big and powerful now? Even if they gave him the old gi and they put his hair like the traditional Akuma hair, I think it would look kind of weird. But I'm not sure. We were talking about the um, Luke's costume three when we were doing our uh, costume tier list. Yeah, and we were mentioning how uh, Luke's forearms look a little bit smaller in that mm -hmm. costume. So it's possible that maybe for um, uh, Akuma's costume two, yeah, they would do a similar the a similar thing. One good example was Seth when they when they redesigned Seth and they gave Seth mm. the old nostalgic costume for Street Fighter Five. Uh, the proportions and everything looked way off. 
It, like, it looked yeah, because really he had weird. very long legs mm-hmm. and a super tiny head. Yeah. Because of the new female frame, so like the, yeah. the male costume looked strange. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I hope they they nail it for Akuma. I mean, Akuma's sick, anyways. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, let's let's talk about just the the little details in the cutscene as well. We can see a kind of um. Well, first, I guess you want to talk about that silhouette, right? When he's doing mm-hmm. that that uppercut, he has this like kind of reddish. Asura's wrath, like demon silhouette around him. Do you think that's like a, a hint of something? Maybe, like I don't it's, know. His it's install? possible. I think it's uh, definitely a reference to the fact that uh, he's basically one and the same with the Satsui no Hado at this point, right? We basically see him getting ready to do his uh, Go Shoryuken, right? And he's like charging up in this aura comes around him so that could be the visual effect that w- could be associated with his od moves mm-hmm. or uh well lack thereof we're gonna talk about that later oh hints, I don't know what to say. but uh <laughs> the um the point is that as i was mentioning before the the normal design for the character is actually fairly plain as far as colors right like a lot of whites and grays mm-hmm. so this is where the the classic akuma you know red and purple could come from like these uh additional effects that he has on the special attacks right of yep. course his fireballs are gonna be purple i would assume right he has his red fireball which is gonna be fiery red i presume again yeah and this you know for sure you can uh and maybe his tatsu it just complements it very well like just very strong yeah, I've seen a lot of like crazy theories, like you know, there's uh, like Shinakuma hints and stuff. They're like, oh, at the end of the cutscene, it doesn't show like his kanji. Maybe it's Shinakuma. They didn't want to like reveal it. There's uh, and there's a, a, a demon that he's based off of, like his design itself that they're kind of yes. showing that aura of as well. I forgot what it's called, but I'm sure someone someone's gonna tell me right away in the in the comments. Uh, but it also could be a hint mirror, like you were saying. It could it could be like a level two thing. Like, I'm assuming his level 2 is an install. I mean, we'll get into the gameplay stuff in a bit, but maybe when he has that install, he'll have that silhouette around him, you know, when he's doing his moves, possibly. But either way, it's, it's, a, it's a nice touch, and it's it just, like you said, uh, since the character, the colors are a little plain, it, it, it um, just shows how, makes him look more powerful, you know? It's, it's a cool, from an artistic standpoint thing. Yeah. Um, Mir, have you watched this trailer 50 times in slow motion in different languages? um no <laughs> well i have i think you, and, uh, <laughs> and there's ahead, like yeah. a little clip there's a little clip that they'll show like a, a quick one frame picture of like ryu also doing his shoryuken uh while akuma is doing it what do you think that's about oh that's interesting oh you didn't uh, notice that see, see i did we, not didn't well, have an organic conversation <laughs> I haven't watched it 50 times. So. Okay, so wh- while while he's doing his uppercut, it'll quickly just flicker for a second. It oh, shows, I, I see it now, yeah. Yeah, I, Ryu I do thought. his uppercut as well, and it's like his uh, his intro. So is it is it like kind of insinuating that Akuma is preparing for another battle with Ryu? Or I mean, is it showing the be... contrast of paths because Ryu took the path of nothingness you know and and akuma yeah, i think i think that's uh i think that's fair enough uh okay. in, it basically shows that they're both uh disciples of the same martial art which they are right yeah and like you were correctly mentioning they took radically different paths because as of uh, street fighter 3 ryu abandoned all of his um satsui no hado ways because uh he decided to train with goken and seal away satsui no hado right like for the the power of nothingness as you mentioned mm-hmm. and he uses his attacks like the dungeon right Mm-hmm. And um, I think for sure, if Akuma has a cell phone, which he might have oh, in, no. uh, <laughs> in the world tour, he's pestering Ryu constantly <laughs> by telling him first to tend me <laughs> in the dark alleyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except, Send him except stickers. Ryu, except Ryu's like, I don't want to get uh, in the first to tend with you because it's basically like whoever loses gets shanked. That's the stakes <laughs> when it comes to. <laughs> <laughs> fighting against Akuma. I can't wait to give. Hiding. I can't wait to give Akuma gifts, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, thanks," and our bond will will grow. Yeah, yeah I can't wait. Yeah, he's probably gonna hate every single one of them and still get <laughs> points for some reason. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of funny things they can do with Akuma being in World Tour. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, uh, and like I said, at the at the very end, they don't show the kanji on his back. I was hoping they'd show like you know a little little hint at, at the raging demon but 
uh, that's pretty much every everything that we saw besides him, you know, absolutely destroying that statue. So I, well, I, I'm excited to see the gameplay. One thing that I can say about the um, the kanji on his back missing is that um, the game director showed a. I think they tweeted it right, like on the official. Maybe it was on the official Street Fighter Six uh, Twitter account. But basically, the concept art for Akuma, right? Mm-hmm. And um, the kanji is on his back, and like uh, one of the, on one of the drawings. Oh, okay. So, uh, there's I think I know still a chance that, you know, that's gonna that's gonna be in. It's interesting because it shows how his beard is like made of two layers, mm-hmm. and in the in the um, concept art, <laughs> it's colored purple and teal, or not teal, cyan, to show that they're different layers, and it looks really funny. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah like in 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 that concept art you can see very well how akuma's proportions have also changed basically what we were saying before how he has the long gorilla arms and the big, yeah like a- that's like the first thing we noticed when we saw that like the leak stuff but either way i'd say this was a uh, one of the best teasers we've seen for a dlc character and yeah you know, absolutely and of course i'm sure there's a little bias because akuma is one of the most popular characters in in street fighter so uh, everyone is insanely excited. Anything else you want to talk about the stage and the cutscene? Otherwise, we're going to move on here. And we're going to finally get into the gameplay stuff. I mean, aside from the fact that uh, it's basically what you said, it's like just a very well-made trailer, and you can tell that a lot of love uh, went into this, and they knew that they had something good because uh, your m- generic uh, World Tour main character doesn't even show up. Yeah, you don't even see the Avatar character. It's weird. John World Tour, as it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it makes sense, right? Like, Akuma would steal the show anyway, and I don't think a lot of people would appreciate it, just a random just showing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, this this was all about Akuma, and, and Capcom knows their fans. Uh, I, even I, who am not... I'm not the biggest fan of Akuma in the sense that I don't play him necessarily, yeah. but like I appreciate the design. Mm-hmm. I could, you know, look at the trailer and say, "Wow, no, this was a a very good teaser." Yeah, very, very good. There, there, there is tons of comments where people are saying, "Nice, now Street Fighter can begin. The game starts now." <laughs> like, there's a <laughs> lot of excitement. Best for this. Uh, the, the chats mentioned that the the ending shot when he's looking down at you, that creepy shot. He says, he's "Looking <laughs> down on your at your avatar." I think is the that that scene is like he's on top of the statue where the head is, right? And he's punching down yeah. to destroy the rest of the statue. Like just destroy the whole thing. Your avatar character yeah, probably gonna appear. Because he destroyed like, the the head just then, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, let's let's move on. Let's talk about Akuma. Game. Obviously, this is not a gameplay trailer, Mirror. So we're gonna have to do predictions. But we can have an idea of looking at how the other shotos are in Street Fighter Six. Let's talk about, I guess, the concept, Mirror. Like, get. Well, I can say that he has an uppercut. So <laughs> nice, Mirror. He definitely does have an uppercut for sure. Right. So one of the things that is always very interesting about Akuma is that in basically every game he's in, he's a very low health character because this is to compensate for the fact that he has a lot of tools, right? Yeah. And the, in general... Um, like a glass cannon. Often, often powerful damage, right? Yeah. Yes. So Very cool. one thing that we noticed for Street Fighter VI is that there is no character that has less than the average amount of health. Or rather, True. I mean, technically most of them, because some characters have more than average. Yeah. But there's no one that has less than 10,000. Yeah, I guess there was only like Honda, Marisa, and Gi. It was like very, very small. But characters mm-hmm. like Kami, you know, that traditionally have lower health, does not. It's all, yeah, normal. Right. So I actually fully expect Akuma to also have standard health if Whoa. they do something with the way he uses resources. Uh-oh. And this one is of where Mir goes off the rails, was, guys. Mir yeah, this Mir is where I go off the rails. This one is... of my guesses was uh, inspired by um, Street Fighter 3. So in Street Fighter 3, <laughs> Akuma has no EX moves as opposed to everyone else. Yeah, uh, all of the supers are also the same length because when he has two super bars, he can do uh, demon or KKZ on top of his uh, selected super, right? Mm-hmm. But he has no EX moves, and basically all of his moves are always EX moves, right? That's that's the idea. It's the only character that, for example, has a fully invulnerable uh, meterless uh, DP in that mm-hmm. game, and things like that. So I was thinking maybe for Street Fighter Six, a way to compensate for the fact that he might have normal health is that. Uh, he could use his health as a resource to use some of his moves. So, like Whoa. for example, when um, 
when we see that like weird aura thing on his uh, Shoryuken in the in the teaser. That could be a hint of how his OD moves look like in the sense that maybe he spends health instead of drive to use them. Or maybe he has an opportunity to do them um, when he's in burnout, right? Like okay. you can do the you can do OD moves in burnout by using health. That would be insane. <laughs> be good. It could be, but like it is a Kuma, so I'm sure that everyone will forgive him for that. <laughs> okay, this is an insane uh, theory and prediction, but then again, I've said insane things too, like Ed being a charge character. So I'll let this yeah. one pass. I think I, no, I think uh, they're gonna freshman. keep it simple. And he will simply, they have it set up so that he'll be the only character with less than average health. And they will <laughs> overload his kit like crazy. <laughs> it will be nuts how many special moves he has. Because, like, don't forget, too, guys, like, Akuma is, like, the, the secret boss character. Legacy secret boss character. He's supposed to be OP and... I don't know, traditionally, the way Capcom balances these kind of OP characters is just keep lowering their health more and more and more, like Seth and Akuma. So I think they'll, they'll continue that, that tradition, and he's going to have, like, the, the crazy part is, it was like, Street Fighter Six Mirror is, like, the game where they try to, the characters feel, like, the most complete. They give them the most amount of moves, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, Akuma, uh, and looking at, like, a character like Ken or even yeah. Luke and then thinking about what Akuma will be like with all of his moves, with the demon flip, and the the two V skills and Street Fighter Five, I can't imagine like yeah. how many moves this character is gonna have. Style it's gonna board. be crazy, dude. So uh, I mean, this this brings the question of um, I wonder which ones are gonna be chosen for modern controls, right? Because obviously, then the others you'll have to do manually. <laughs> yeah, everyone's talking about the the modern de modern demon. Uh, is, but <laughs> yeah, everyone's modern super demon. excited for that. He has to have Raging Demon, but you know, we've talked about this many times in the past, Mir, but let's, let's mention yeah. it again. Uh, my current theory is that because Raging Demon is not a novelty, but it's not like just the main, his main level three, you know, he usually always right. has more supers than, than the average Shoto, right? So I think they're still going to continue that as well, and he'll probably have a level two install, and the Raging Demon will be able to be done with one additional level during that install for three total. And then he'll have his traditional level three uh, to combo into uh, whenever. So, like, even if he's in burnout, he needs to make a comeback. Like, are you still right. are you still on the same page on that theory, too? I think, yeah, there's different ways of doing it, for sure. Like, one of them is the one you mentioned where you have uh, level two install plus one for the demon. Uh, you can even have it so that his level three is... Uh, the install. Oh, that's interesting. You can do it. There's, there's. Okay, so like, let's go down the list again. Okay. The first, the first theory that we had was Akuma as two level threes, right? One is demon and one is whatever else it is, right? KKZ. That was the first one. However, this causes a problem, and the problem is that Akuma with a seven twenty at all times is not good. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. And I think Capcom in Street Fighter V <laughs> showed that they didn't want to deal with that either. You because do they walked it away <laughs> with the V-trigger. Yeah. Right? So I think that's reasonable. And honestly, it's a more, uh, you know, less toxic way of playing. We, we, we have to point this out, guys. Like, once again, because of modern controls and all that, like, Having access to Demon at all times when you have three levels would be actually insane because unlike Zangief, Akuma is quite a fast character. You know, like he's not he's not Although a, Demon moves forward then you know is invulnerable even if it doesn't hit you immediately. Mm -hmm. like, One thing for sure that's gonna happen though, what? and I, I would be very surprised if they don't do this, is um Zangief Super in Street Fighter Six, even though you cannot jump after the flash. Still has seven frames of star up, I believe, right? Six or seven, seven, I think. Yeah. Which means that um for one, it cannot be used to punish a lot of things necessarily because um everything's minus in the game. Uh, right. Uh, but uh, on top of that, it's like slower than his SPD, for example. So it doesn't necessarily net you a guaranteed punish. Yeah. But also, um, you know, it's it's a little bit harder to set up into because it does have a little bit of star up. And I would assume that um Akuma's raging demon will be the same thing. Where it will be at least, I'd assume seven frame star up. Probably will have like a negative range, sort of how it is in the final patch of Street Fighter V, where a lot of setups don't even work because you have to be so close yeah. to uh, the demon and opponent. 
on top of that, there's the complicated input, so you kind of have to tick into it. You cannot just do it raw unless modern controls, as we were mentioning before. Unless you can care into his overhead, that'd be sick. But like, <laughs> unlike Zangief's 720, you know, he's he's actually moving forward to grab you, and he's usually invincible while he's moving forward. Right, it looks exactly. like he's teleport. So, you know, we're going to have situations like Drive Rush, Instant Demon, because you can buffer, probably buffer the e demon input during the startup of the Drive Rush, or... Uh, Akuma players in the past have used it as even as an anti -air. you can when someone jumps out on you you can do low forward buffer the demon and then the demon will come out as they land and then the iframes will eat the the jump in and you know going through fireballs or even going mm -hmm. through di uh, there's there's a lot of interesting right. ways you can use okay. demon compared to to Zangief yeah th this was um, basically to explain why the theory of uh, just having two level threes or one is demon is very dangerous because mm -hmm. of uh, the threat of a move that cannot be jumped after the the flash, right? Yeah. Uh, this is assuming that they will maintain that, right? Because it could potentially not be the case anymore. But obviously, that's a whole other kind of worms. So yeah, we're thinking I, it from I like a competitive point of view. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, everyone just wants to just do demon and land it. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, but um, okay. So that that was theory one. Theory two was the one you said, and then it's like V trigger one. From um, Street Fighter, Fighter Five, 5 yeah. where yeah, like is um, level two could be, for example, is um, V Trigger oh. One. You spend the extra bar to do the demon. Makes yeah. sense. Total three bars, right? Uh, and that that's another one. Another one could be that is level three itself. Like he only has a single level three, is the demon, and he can combo into his demon so that he actually can, you know, do combos into his level three, right? Because yeah. that, that was a problem that uh, Zangief had, and they fixed it so that he can actually combo his, into his level 3. So I would assume that if they take that uh, approach, they would do this as well. Yep. And, um, I mean, the other possibility, which is, I, I mean, I think everyone hopes that they don't do this, is that he doesn't have a demon. No, there's no all. way. There's no way, dude. He has <laughs> ascended, man. If anything, the demon's going to be even crazier. <laughs> this time around <laughs> there's no way they'll do that but yeah i, I hear what you're saying <laughs> i mean these are these are all the possibilities personally i think i don't know which one i would prefer i like the idea of uh, a level three install just because it would be very unique to him and then you can do a demon for free out of it right that could be very interesting i think you should no have two level, level threes three. no matter what i think that's it, that'd it's be very cool. possible yeah it's very possible uh, if if because like the question is if the demon is level two plus one, then you still have the possibility of having you know two level threes, right? Like a KKZ and I don't know whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But like if you have a level three install, as I was mentioning, um, that could be something very very unique to Akuma. Very high risk to go into this install. Maybe it's absolutely crazy, right? Be being a level three install, and it still gives you the opportunity to do the demon, and at the same time, you know, you can do a normal level three. Yeah. Um I like this idea. I don't know if they will do it, but Akuma is just so special that everything could happen really. Yeah, they can do anything they want. And with Woshige, who knows <laughs> what he's gonna do. <laughs> oh man. Uh so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe and I'm just gonna still stick with my guns with the, the level two install. And then at any mm -hmm. point if he spends another additional bar during the timer, he'll get his uh raging demon. And it also kind of gives a warning to the opponent that Hey, a raging demon might be coming, so be careful. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how do you think he's gonna play as as a Shoto? Uh, you know the way the Shotos we have in the game already. We have Ryu's supposed to be kind of like the well rounded Shoto, and then Ken's more of the rush down aggressive, and then Luke's kind of like the sweaty, the sweaty Shoto. So, <laughs> I if if, if Akuma, what does that mean we'll never figure he's, it out. <laughs> dude, he's sweaty. He's the esports Shoto. So, what? Uh, how do you think Akuma is gonna be? Like, I, I, you know, I've noticed Mir that every DLC character is starting to get more and more complicated, and it seems like the more time they have these these characters in the oven, the more they're like adding to them. And Akuma's mm -hmm. had the longest time, you know, they've had over a year with this character. And uh, looking at Street Fighter Five with his V skill too, he was even charging his key, and you had like the key charge uh, setups and canceling specials and specials. There's a lot of wild stuff. With Akuma and Street Fighter V. Um, do you think it will be really I, difficult to play? And complex? It's. I think so. Like, it will probably have the most special moves out of any Shoto. Mm -hmm. However, 
what I expect him to be is still to be an all-rounder character, just more extreme than uh, Ryu is, right? Okay. Especially if they do... So, okay, there's two things. One is that Ryu now has a fairly unique identity with the Hashogeki that he never had before. Yeah. Right? Before he was just a character that did Shoto things, and then the other Shotos were Ryu, but, like, different. Mm -hmm. Instead, this time, Ryu is is a Shoto, but he has some extra things that only he has. Right? Like, the the donkey kick is only his, of course, but uh, the Ashogeki is the important one, I think. And especially with the recent buffs uh, that make... That that, that is a big part of his game plan now, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so this opens up the opportunity for Akuma to still be a well-rounded character, but with an Akuma twist to it. Yeah. And, of course, he will ha- probably have his Demon Flip, right? That's a unique air mobility tool that other Shotos usually don't have. Mm-hmm. The Air Fireball is another unique tool that Akuma often has. Well, mm-hmm. I think actually always had it. Um, yep, dive Kick. The Dive Kick, of course, yeah. So, like, his air mobility is usually more powerful than other uh, than other Shotos. And on top of that, uh, he often has a Teleport. And yeah. this Teleport, of course, gives him the opportunity to escape certain setups that other characters cannot. This was always at the cost of his health, right? So, like, I guess yeah. this puts it in perspective with uh, the rest of his kit, right? If he doesn't have less health, then uh, I would assume that a lot of these resources, or sorry, a lot of these moves would require extra resources. Like, for example, say, uh, I think the teleport would be, um, you know, you'd have to spend drive on it, basically. Like, you wouldn't be able to do it meterlessly if his health is also high because. Otherwise, it would be extremely hard. Yeah, to how would you down. balance a character do... that simply has the best kit of like, and it's a Shoto, and it's well rounded? There's got to be a way to balance it, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm saying is that if he also has high health, then you know, you bait the teleport, and then you do the same damage you would uh, as to anyone else. It would be a little bit unfair, I think. So you'd have to balance it somehow. And I figure it's a resource thing, which is why I had that idea of the uh, health as a resource. So. I am going to say that he's probably going to be his old self, like in the sense this 355 kit, with the addition of, I really feel like the V-Skill 2 is coming back. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the V-Skill 1, but I feel like the whole idea of like him powering up, and uh, maybe that's where the red aura on his specials come from, you know, that could also work well in 356. Mm-hmm. Right, like powering up to empower his moves or like his fireballs and stuff. Uh, that could be a nice addition. Some people were saying maybe we'll get uh, moves that uh, Oni has in Street Fighter 4. Oh, like the which, air uh, dash? If you guys, yeah, if you guys don't know, Oni is basically the ultimate version of Akuma if he had succumbed completely to the Satsu no Hado and became just like a pure demon, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it was worse in the tier list. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the point was that he has kind of like this um, Misogi ground slam move where he jumps up and then slams down. That could be a very powerful tool to have in Street Fighter Five. He sort of had it in the form of his forward heavy punch. That he could use to avoid. He's got throwing, that cross right? up slash too, Mira. Super cool move. Yeah, he also had the cross up slash, and like you mentioned, he had the jetpack where he could <laughs> use. Uh, yeah. He could use uh, basically a fireball in the air to maneuver in different directions. Yeah, I think that one should stay in Street Fighter Four. Personally, I really, really dislike it. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying, <laughs> but it's not even that good. But it was annoying, so I don't like that. Yeah, but um, uh, the I think the Misogi, the, the the ground slam, the one where he jumps up in the air and comes down, I think that could come back as a special move. Okay, if it's not if it's not a a normal right, like a, like I said in Street Fighter Five, he had the the forward heavy punch. Yeah, because the throw baits throw baits are strong, right? So having having access to something like that is definitely absolutely very valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, this on top of the potential, you know, Visco two, if that if that does come back, or Visco one even. Uh, that would ha- give him so many moves. It would. So it would, it would dude. And I with the dry rush system, we won't get oof. too much. I don't think we get too much more than this. You know, like mm-hmm. if they give him an only move, it's one of them. It's not like two or three of them because this character would be so incredibly bloated and complicated. Right? You get <laughs> to the point where you get to the point where even the developers would have a hard time. 
uh, making you use all of his moves, right? Because people will be like, no, this is too complicated. I'll use three moves. <laughs> yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's going to happen no matter what, too. But not to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to that extreme. So uh, I want to talk about, Mira, about... We, we know Akuma's traditionally been a very strong character in, in most every game that he's in because of yeah. his design. Uh, do you think Akuma will be like the first DLC character that might be a little overtuned because I feel like it, it there is some restraint even uh recently uh Broski was taking a look at that that footage of Aki during that uh TV show in Japan where they were showing behind mm. the scenes footage and they're showing that there was a lot of changes to Aki even in that well obviously during a character's development but uh, we can see with with Ed, there is definitely restraint, even in Rashid, on like the pushback on someone's buns. They definitely didn't expect how powerful that level two would be. But do you think they'll show restraint with Akuma, or do you think there's gonna go all up because Akuma kind of just gets this pass that he is this secret boss character, and and yeah. everyone loves him, and everyone wants him to be strong, and if and if he comes out uh, even like mid, I think uh, people will be very angry if they just continue to see uh, Luke all the time, you know. Yeah, I think it's really important more than anything else. Although I do agree that probably character um, people would want to see this character be strong. I think more than anything else, this character has to be like the most fun character in Street Fighter Six. Okay, he has to like if it if they don't manage to make him fun, that's what's gonna cause the wrath of all the uh, Akuma players. So fun because that's a that's like a delicate thing, right? Because like, what is fun to you? Fun is fun like being overpowered and winning all oh, your yeah. matches, like. Right, like the the question is, what is fun to an Akuma player? Which is probably a better question. Lightning raging demon I every think, round. I think <laughs> you want to. I think you want to do cool stuff. That's the yeah. first thing, right? So like having access to particularly strong, uh, empowered moves that you know look very impressive and you know do impressive stuff. Of course, I think that would be important, and it, and they seem to you know like have, have gone towards that. You know, with the whole uh, aura thing, and maybe. Potentially, like his overdrive moves looking different than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Everything that we mentioned so far. So, doing cool things is one. Um, I think having powerful and potentially long combos is another thing that is sort of a staple for a character like this, right? A lot of okay. people really enjoy the um, combo potential. Yeah. And, um, and then another one is uh, having the access to all the tools that he does right like always feeling like there's something that you can do basically you're never in a checkmate situation because you're a kuma right and you get to do everything so if he has these three things <laughs> by design he is high tier Mir, when you're talking about all of this like you're making me like nervous for capcom like the things you're mentioning i'm like man they, they have to nail this mirror like they they cannot mess this up you know? Right, but that's exactly why he's the last character of the season. Mm -hmm. That's probably why he is going to be released with the balance patch, like at the same time, so that yeah. they, you know, like that. And even if he isn't, he will basically be already prepared for the next season. Like they will already know. They what know what the they know what the meta is, so they know what a character needs to be strong in this game right now. Yeah, and you know he's and, a he's a Shoto mirror. Like how exactly? Can, yeah, yeah. How can a show be bad? He's well rounded from the beginning, but you know, <laughs> then we look at Ryu and we're like, you know, like what happened I to think this? The character? problem with Ryu wasn't necessarily that, like Ryu wasn't good as a design because obviously the design has been around for a very long time and yeah. it worked. It's because he didn't have anything that was better than the other Shodos. It was just like kind of like mediocre in every regard. So I he see. didn't find his own niche, right? But if you right. have Akuma as that well, like he's not gonna have a shogeki, right? Because yeah. that's Ryu thing. So I assume that Akuma will be that well-rounded Shoto that has the strong air mobility and escape options that Akuma is well known for. Mm -hmm. Uh that might just create a new playstyle that right now is not present in the game because obviously that would create more opportunity for mix-ups on wake up and he stuff. He has a tool for like and every situation, that, you know? Right, right, right. And that uh, that I think meshes well with uh um, Street Fighter 6 because uh, famously his demon flip he has a low out of it he has an overhead out of it and he has a throw out of it yeah, and, a throw yeah uh, like that's so nice because parry is such a strong option in this game right so yeah. like, if people are parrying a lot then the throw could probably do massive damage or really punish kind of throw in something maybe do even something special and of course uh, the teleport might let him escape situations like being burnt out in the corner right and having to deal with supers and the eyes and stuff right yeah Especially the red fireball mirror three times red fireball mm -hmm. it'll beat other fireballs it will 
it'll, if it does three hits, it'll beat DI. Uh, it will probably chip a lot of drive meter. That alone is really strong. Red fireball, dry rush, mirror, new meta. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you'll be able to empty cancel it into drive rush just for oh good old time's God. sake <laughs> bro oh to the extreme like i i can't even no, imagine but, uh, oh man what is drive rush would even point, look like too i guess the point of what i'm trying to say is that having a very well-rounded kit with uh the extra unique akuma bs uh, <laughs> is probably there's no a way very he's gonna be bad recipe. there's no way it's probably a very good recipy for success i think yeah, yeah. And and I know that Capcom knows. I mean, it's very obvious at this point that they cannot screw this up, right? Like they're they're really hyping this character up a lot. Like I said, there was no John World Tour in it. No, yeah, no, you, no, you no, can't no, mess just with Kuma. You just can't. So I'm I'm hopeful. I think Street Fighter Six overall is going in the right direction. We'll see with the balance patch. If um, my opinion, you know, still continues to be that way, I hope that they're gonna tune. You know those universal mechanics and characters that were a little bit too overbearing and stuff, but I think they have the right idea. Like with the the minor patch, I already saw some you know hints at where they were going, and um, I feel that Akuma is not gonna be bad. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if he's gonna be top tier. That is very difficult for me to predict, but um, it's a shadow, I man. I really think that they're focusing on making this character fun, which. It, 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 like for ninety percent of the people that play this game, uh, you know they're not gonna be uh, doing crazy pro player stuff, right? They just want Akuma to be to be cool, and yeah. I think I think that, that that they want to do that. That Capcom wants to do that. And but it's important here, really like, from a competitive standpoint, that that players that want to do cool stuff, they also want to see cool stuff in tournaments. Yes, and I agree. In, in no, order I agree. for that to happen, he has to be strong. Like pros are not just gonna drop Ken or, or Luke for Akuma unless he's, you know, top tier. So Right, that is that is important. True. And it's I important. and I think I think that is absolutely important. But as long as you can you know, as as long as you can demon people online, I think <laughs> a lot of people will be you know, they will accept the the trade off. <laughs> and then you could do that video mirror where uh, you remember you had that thumbnail of Akuma doing the demon off the cliff? <laughs> Because like <laughs> no no one like like there's the players that like don't know how to play the uh, Akuma well, but they know all the demon setups because it's just the Absolutely. coolest thing with the character. Right? <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, yeah, I mean, all excited that that much is true. <laughs> I can't wait. To, I can't wait to see this drive rush. I I think it's gonna be like super turbo fast, but it goes short range. Like I think it's and before be, that's his teleport. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I saw the chat mention it too. It's gonna be his teleport. Uh, I should probably mention too, Mir, there was like not really a leak slash data mine, but there was some, some people were taking the, like the coding or something or assets and putting it into Street Fighter V and they kind of got a little hint. At Street Fighter some, Six? Of, of, yeah, from Street Fighter Six to Street Fighter V to like see, mm, see. A, a hint of uh, some of Akuma's move list and stuff. But I, we didn't really see much except for maybe a possible like level one fireball super and, and mm -hmm. some kind of, uh, looks like a, crouching heavy punch or something mm -hmm. yeah and uh, the other one was uh a little bit like that misogi that was mentioning that ground slam Just yeah the end of that animation that could be tagged on at the end of his dp you know like it was in uh three five five for his v trigger stuff or maybe it's a move on its own we it's don't a, even know if it's akuma i mean I was yeah we don't even know if it's akuma and it's, sure. and it's it's so old that like we don't even know if they change things right so it could it could be anything it's been yeah it's been a year so many things to change all right, Mir, you want to uh, start talking about guessing time? Release date time. Woohoo. Oh, boy. Well, first off, don't you think it's a little crazy they showed Akuma right after poor Ed and just, like, stole his spotlight, like, immediately? They did it twice, actually. So during the New Year's, they showed a picture of Akuma for, like, no reason, and everyone's like, oh, man, Akuma's coming next. And then now Ed just got released. They didn't even give this guy two weeks, Mir. And now we already have an Akuma reveal. What's going on? I mean, like I said, they know. Everyone forgot himself. about Ed. I don't think anyone cared as much for Ed as they did for <laughs> Akuma. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone that. that isn't. Uh... Hey, listen, I remember uh, during a, a certain. Uh, uh. It was a, a first to ten event with the Italian FGC. I was commentating some matches with Andy Walker, and then he won his set. And we asked him, "It's like, oh, who's the character you're most excited for 
in Street Fighter Six. This was before the game was out. Okay. Right? And it was uh we knew about the, the DLC leaks as well. And uh he said Akuma, he didn't say Ed. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. So you know, like even even the even the people that are thinking about <laughs> that were famous for Ed, they're thinking about Akuma. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of copium, so we're gonna get into that. But, but first off, let me establish the timeline, okay? So the the next season pass or a year pass or whatever it's called has to start by June second because that would be the anniversary, and otherwise everyone's gonna go you know contact Phoenix Wright and, and start charging lawsuits if akuma doesn't come out in a year as it's advertised so june 1st is the absolute last day uh, akuma can possibly come out including probably june the balance 20th? patch and the costumes <laughs> no june 1st because the anniversary is still spring <laughs> look man no june 1st june 2nd is the anniversary of street fighter 6 okay so uh i saw an interesting post lining up the numbers for the release, uh, the release dates from the reveal to the gameplay to uh, the release of the character, and it's always an average from the reveal to the gameplay. It's always an average of between nineteen and twenty-four days. Uh, that's for mm. Rashid, Aki, and Ed. And then yeah. after the gameplay is revealed, it's always an average between nineteen and twenty-eight days for the actual release. Now we can assume there's going to be an Akuma Fighter Pass, right? So the fighter pass, mm -hmm. they only have two months left, right? So it's either going to come out uh, in uh, April or May, right? It can't be June because then obviously that means you come out at the end of June. And, you know, once again, Phoenix, right? So what do you think? I would assume based on uh, what we even said last time we discussed this, that it would be in May. I feel like the it's very important for Capcom to release the patch and the uh, you know akuma probably as soon as possible because you want to give the competitive audience as much time as possible to work with the patch and the new character right what so, about rashid dude they release him like less than two weeks before he i i up. know that that one was <laughs> dude that's scary man messed up <laughs> and I'm assuming akuma is going to be strong this is going to be quite significant I and a lot like... of uh pro players especially like tokido are definitely going to main this character yeah, the, the two most likely things are either at the anniversary, which I wouldn't like, but it is possible, or, uh, you know, like at least a, a month prior so that for the anniversary, right, like you can already start talking about the new season pass, basically. Well, right? he, or no, pass, wait, sorry, the chat mentioned, pass. wasn't there a, a Monster Hunter uh, thing announced recently, guys? Was that a Monster Hunter fighter pass or just an event? Do you guys know? I didn't even check the trailer yet. Because if it's a fighter pass, then that, that, that pretty much narrows it down. That would be April will be the Monster Hunter event. And then, oh, it's just a costume? It's not a fighter pass? Oh, it's a collab. Okay. Like the Spy X family collab. So it's not necessarily a fighting pass. Okay. Thanks for clarifying mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. So that still narrows it down. Like, I mean, I've seen a lot of people are hopeful that it's the beginning of uh, May. And that's what you're hoping for too, right? Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. I hope it's not the end of April because I'm busy. <laughs> but as I but that's that, the most likely thing, though. Like it's it's so likely, like an April twenty seventh, twenty eighth. But yeah, you're right. the The earlier, the better. This is assuming the balance patch comes with Akuma, which I would assume it would. Why? Yeah, for reasons that we've there's already no reason to wait any longer unless. But, but if it do if it doesn't, it comes out. Then, like my final answer is that comes out the anniversary, and Akuma comes out, you know, like middle of April. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. The biggest hint we have is simply the the fighter pass. Like that's the biggest yeah, hint. Yeah, like if yeah. if if the end of this month rolls out and it's not an Akuma fighter pass, then obviously it's not Akuma coming out that month. It will be the next month and so on. And all the characters release at the end of the month, right, guys? For each month. So that pretty much narrows it down. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of scary too if Akuma does roll out with the balance patch, Mir, because there's going to be so much content. Also, you have to figure out the new mechanics <laughs> if they're changed at all. Yeah, if they're changed at all. And and uh, yeah, I, I, I wonder if that's a good thing or a bad thing for Akuma, though, because like if he if he does turn out to be not as strong as Capcom expected, uh, will, will they be willing to release an emergency patch or do players actually have to wait in a full entire year 
before above the Kuma. I don't see. I don't think that's likely. I think that, that, that's why the the stakes are so high, right? Like this character has to be so many things at once. There's no way they can know though without releasing the character early, or you know, there's just no way. It's like, it doesn't matter how much testing they do. There's yeah. there's nothing that can replace the fact uh, an entire world of pros and everyone playing this character and finding out Absolutely. everything. Especially especially if they make a character that is very, very complicated, right? Maybe the internal team has a great idea of how he should be played, and then he is released and no one figures him out for like two years. <laughs> We've only had three past characters. Like, Rashid, people thought he seemed undertuned at the beginning, and now Rashid turns out to be really strong. Aki, still undertuned. Ed right now is still uh, undertuned. Like, Ed players are dropping like flies, so where like Akuma might even it out, and they're, they're two for two. I think after this season one patch finally or season two patch comes out here, like the balance patch, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it, it's it's not as big of a deal if they have to do emergency patches or small tweaks, just like Street Fighter Five. Like they did the same thing. I don't think it's not big of a deal. The first patch is always the most important, like one of the most game changing patches is the very first because it's an entire year of information. Right. And I, yeah. and I we'll, we'll finally have an idea of what kind of game Capcom wants this to be. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like I said, they've been they've been looking at what uh, characters are strong, and they're seeing Shoto's up there, and especially Luke and Ken. So I, I don't know how they could possibly get it wrong and go yeah. too far, you know, like like with the kit that again, Akuma has. I would say either Akuma first in April, and then the 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 patch in June, or uh, they're both coming out in May. I feel like they're not gonna wait for Akuma at the anniversary. That seems a little bit weird to me. That's best case scenario, I think. So Akuma comes mm -hmm. out as soon as possible, and then they have at least a month or so to release an emergency patch uh, before EVIL starts. Basically, that's where we're at. Yep. So we'll see. That's but, reasonable enough. But like I said, it's, it's, it is pretty exciting, Mir, that uh, they yeah. uh, revealed Akuma so fast right after uh, Ed's release, and that kind of gives us an idea that uh, we're going to get a lot of content uh, condensed over the summer. And if we follow now that we have a we have a timeline now compared to season one, we have an idea of when characters are released now, and mm -hmm. you know we might be seeing another character, you know, before September uh, if season two begins immediately on June second, right after, right? So, uh, yeah. it's it's man, super exciting, and Akuma is just so important. After Akuma's out, I mean, the next most popular character is probably like Sakura, another Shoto. So. What do you mean? Next season is uh, Shadowloo Island, remember? Oh, Shadowloo <laughs> Island, baby. Then there'll be Bison. Bison and Sagat. <laughs> Sagat, dude. Oh, my God. No, it's, it's all Vegas with different, uh, oh, <laughs> different masks. Vega with boxing wait. gloves. I can't Vega wait. Vega with an eye patch. <laughs> I, hope we don't, I hope we don't get spoiled like on a leak this time. I mean, the, the, I think oh, yeah, the leak yeah, really overall... I think the leak for like the initial roster, like it, it did good. Like it was good that it, it happened overall, I think, for the news. But this time for season two, I hope it's a genuine surprise. I, I I'm yeah. I'm really interested to see. I think have. I think they should show the lineup though. Like they they shouldn't no keep silhouettes. Us in the dark. <laughs> no no silhouettes. I think <laughs> they should have a big reveal revealing the four characters, but they should be the ones doing it. Not How about three league. characters and the last one's a silhouette. <laughs> Come on, Mirror, meet me halfway. And it's in the silhouette of Bison. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the silhouette of Bison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be so sick. All right, uh, I guess let's wrap this up, Mir. I'm super excited for Akuma. I, I can't wait to uh, hear what you guys have to say, what predictions you have on his gameplay and all that. And uh, let's hope he's OP because no one's going to complain. This is one of the only characters that gets a pass. But thanks for joining. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, take it easy, guys. Bye-bye. Till next time when we see some gameplay.